So now as we continue our look at the changes that happen at the synaptic connections, we'll entitle the next flowchart synaptic connection changes, and this will be the second part to this idea. Changes, Roman numeral 2. And so here what we're going to do is apply some of the knowledge that we learned prior. We understood that synapses do change. The connections within the nervous system do change over time and over activity specifically. And one of the major changes that can occur is during the process of memory. And oftentimes with memory also comes the idea of learning. And that's what we'll first look at when we apply this idea of neuronal plasticity, synaptic changes in other words. Memory and learning are two processes that occur via exactly what we talked about. They occur via the use of neuronal plasticity. Because neurons can be changed, because synapses can be changed, memories can form, learning can happen. And the basis of memory and learning is mainly held in two ideas. One of those ideas is short-term memory, which we'll do first. Short-term memory, or STM, or sometimes even called working memory, is any memory or information, more specifically, that's going to be briefly held. And that's the name short. So it's a briefly held piece of information. Now, what's going to be critical here in understanding the synaptic changes that may happen is the idea of what to do with this. And there are two major outcomes to do with this information. Because it's briefly held, it may be released and it's going to be released. It is no longer going to be remembered. In other words, usually if it's irrelevant. So it's released if it's irrelevant. And that makes sense. You do not care about irrelevant information. You don't remember irrelevant information. But what you're going to see is that if you are understanding information in a higher order, if you're trying to remember something, what you're going to then see is this information that was originally briefly held being stored. And that storage happens in a specific part of the brain known as the cerebral cortex. And it's one thing to store a memory, but it's another thing to retrieve that memory. The whole idea of exams is to make sure that you can retrieve the correct information at the correct time. You're retrieving it from the cerebral cortex, but in terms of short-term memory, there's sort of a link that allows you to retrieve it from this part of the brain. And so we can state that short-term memory is accessed so long as it's stored. If it's stored, it can be accessed. And that access is via temporary links. Keyword here is that these links are temporary. And they are found within the site of short-term memory, known as the hippocampus. So the hippocampus has direct connections that allow short-term memory to be retrieved from the cerebral cortex. So we have the hippocampus serving as a brain region, the cerebral cortex serving as a brain region. If you have something stored in the cerebral cortex, it will be accessed through the links that are found in the hippocampus. So cerebral cortex has information, hippocampus gets the information, and hopefully from there you can apply the information in the necessary manner, whatever it may be. Overall, with short-term memory, what we need to understand is that the premise behind this type of memory and this type of learning, therefore, is the idea of acquiring something, acquiring knowledge or information, but not necessarily, absolutely not necessarily, maintaining that information. Why isn't this information being maintained? It's because it's held briefly and it's difficult sometimes to retrieve. Now, in order to increase the ability to maintain information, you no longer rely on short-term memory. Via neuronal plasticity, you're going to change the way you understand something by hopefully relying on long-term memory. And this is oftentimes the goal of many lectures and studies of people. They want to increase their long-term memory in specific disciplines and specific fields to apply that information somewhere, wherever that may be, that context may be. Now, the long-term memory is going to be uh, a little bit different in terms of its storage and retrieval. Now, its information is also going to be stored at the cerebral cortex. Okay, So the information in long-term memory is also stored in the cerebral cortex, which we'll abbreviate as CC. But this is why this is long-term memory here. This is the differentiator between short-term and long-term. 
Though the information is stored there, just like it is for short-term memory, the connections that are necessary to retrieve it, the synapses that fire when you want to retrieve something from long-term memory, those connections are also within the cerebral cortex. So the goal here, the idea here to understand is that these temporary links can be changed to more permanent links within the cerebral cortex to aid in retrieval, thus to aid in the overall learning process. What you want to do as somebody who's learning something as a student is hopefully have information that can be retrieved from short-term memory, sure, but also have bigger and broader concepts stored within long-term memory to be able to uh, apply them in more novice or in more, uh, let's say, difficult scenarios than let's say just say an exam or something. The long-term memory plays that role for that reason. Long-term memory is the reason you know how to walk, it's the reason you know how to drive, it's the reason you know how to write. These are activities that happen over and over and over again, thus establishing synaptic changes, connection changes that are strong within the cerebral cortex itself, thus it can be retrieved much easier and much more accurately than the short-term memory. The whole idea is, somehow, some way, you want to hopefully get the short-term memory information put into long-term memory, and I think of this as via activity, via repetition, via successful and deep-minded repetition will allow this to happen. That covers our look on memory and learning. We'll finish this side of the flowchart by talking about long-term potentiation in the next video.